Hey, how you doing? So welcome to One Image My Edit. And in this edit, I'm going to be showing you how to recreate the Cine Still 800T, which was one of my favorite films of all time that I used to shoot on a Mamiya RZ67 medium format camera. And it is a beautiful film that has this lovely yellow hue to it. But at the same time, it was very, very saturated uh, desaturated with with the color and it just had its its own vibe going on the colors were just beautiful um so i'm going to re recreate this as, as best as possible as i can within lightroom and you can see here's here's what i've got this is the before and after and it is really really close um it's 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 quite a good quite a good edit if i must say so myself so i'm going to jump into this and show you how you can recreate this yourself in lightroom and then apply this to your images to get this lovely uh, this lovely film look. So let's just hit the reset button and let's start again. So the first thing I want to do is think about the exposure. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. Um, depending on your image will determine how much of this you want to push up. So usually when shooting this film type, it would be slightly overexposed. So you can push this up to almost a stop, but it de really depends on your, like I said, on your particular image. Like that, that one stop wouldn't be a bad starting point for this, uh, but this doesn't need it as much. I'm gonna bring this down and just, we're just pushing it up a little bit. So I'm gonna put uh, 0 0.15 in there and then come back to this after and we can just play around with that. The highlights, I'm going to bring these down to minus 70. I'm going to bring them down and we're going to bring the shadows up to plus 35. Okay, and the whites and the blacks, we're going to bring these down to minus 40 on, on both of them. So what we're doing is just bringing them down, okay, and we're going to come back within the tone curve and bring out some of that brightness. So in essence, again, we're flattening the image like we do. Um, I have been doing on most of my uh, one image, my edits with these, especially with these film preset looks. So what we're going to do as well, because we're shooting uh, medium format or trying to mimic medium format. If we bring down the dehaze down to around minus 40, what that does is give you this haze that medium format had. But we need to then counterbalance that with the tone curve within the blacks to just bring back some of the contrast. Otherwise it will just look too flat. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna select three points there. So we've got the uh, whites, the midtones, and the blacks. I'm just gonna push these midtones up a little bit. And with these grays, I'm gonna bring them down to around here. That looks pretty good. And then these blacks, I'm gonna bring these down and just push them in here. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just adding a black into this. So this is what's gonna give us our, our contrast back. And it's worth spending a little bit of time just really getting this to the exact point that you want so the image looks good. That looks pretty good to me. So what we wanna do now is put this across all three colors. And I want this to be pretty much consistent throughout. So what I'm gonna do is right click I'm going to copy channel settings, go to the red, right click again and put paste channel settings. And I'm just going to do that on the other two as well. And that just means then we get quite a consistent edit all the way through. So all of our colors are matching our tones on there. So that's a neat little trick that you can do as well. So let's come to the color grading then. Most of the magic works within these color grading and HSL panels. So within the hues, Let's think about the reds. Let's start with them. Let's bring these down to about minus 15, minus 16. We're going to bump a little bit of orange in there to about plus two, plus three. That looks pretty good. Yellow, we're going to boost that up to about 28, 30 because it did have a, a lot of yellow and a lot of green. So let's add some green in, maybe not as much to around 21, 22. That looks quite good around here. You can see this green starting to appear now. I'm just going to take a little bit out of the blue to around minus 10 because we're going to add some more of that back in later. Purple, I'm going to push that up to around plus 14, plus 15. 
and the magenta I'm going to push that up to around plus 20. So these particular settings here just really mimic the hues of the actual film and what they what they basically look like once they were processed. And we need to do the same within the saturation. So the reds we're going to bring that down to minus about minus four minus five. I've played around with the red a little bit and that seems to be the best area, the best number. The orange, we're going to bring that down and the yellow to around minus 30 on both of them. Um, just to really give us this, this matter effect. So 30, 31, that looks, that looks pretty good. The greens, we're going to bring them down a little bit more to around, mount, around minus 46, 47. That's looking good. Aqua, it's going to push that up a little bit. And the blue, we're going to bring that down. Minus 24, 25. That looks good. And then the purple magenta, we're going to bring them down. On this particular image, it works at about 48. But yours might be 50, 55 around there. Same with the magenta. This here is about 53, 54. That looks pretty good there. Okay, let's go to the luminance, so the brightness of these. Now, again, it's just working out how the film was once it was developed. And these particular numbers, after playing around for a few hours, these are what work the best. So minus 12 on the red, plus 6 on the orange. The yellow, we're looking at about plus 12 around there. That looks good. Same with the green. And then the blue, I'm just going to bring that down to about minus 10. Purple up to around plus 25, 26, I think looks good. And then the magenta, not as much, I'd say about 18, 19 around there is pretty good. So that's given us a nice color. So if we click on the before and after, you can see what we've done with that. See, we've taken up these yellows and we're just stripping a lot of the colors and just changing the hue, shifting the, the hue. So let's go to the colors now uh, with the color grading. So with this, you want to be adding within the shadows. You want to add a hue of around 65. That looks pretty good. And a saturation of about 10. There we go. So we're kind of adding in this this yellow bordering on green tinge to the actual image there. That's looking pretty good. And let's jump over to the highlights. And within the highlights, we want to be going around 43, which is a nice which is a nice warm tone there you can see where it is there it's a it's a, in between the yellow and orange and it's it's quite nice it's a it's a nice nice amount the saturation i'm going to push this up to 16 so i'm just going to click on the numbers there just so i don't end up moving that around let's jump back to the shadows i'm actually going to boost the luminance up to plus 45 just to make that a little bit brighter okay and then I'm going to come down to the blending and the balance. And what I found was that, is that if we push the blending up to 74, 75 around there, and then the balance to around minus 76, that really give us, there we go, that really gives us a nice uh, color cast. If you look now at the before and after, you can see how much that color grading has really just brought this image alive by just implementing these yellows and greens within the shot. It, it's absolutely amazing so getting these hues and saturations right is really um, really important and it's worth just playing yourself with these you know by one or two points from the hue and the saturation and and also the the blending and the balance and you'll see that each image will just work slightly better um, when you play around with these okay so the next thing we want to do is think about the because it's an 800 ISO film we want to add grain then. I want to be pushing that to yeah, around 30. Size 47, 48, 50. That's good. 
49 that looks good around there and the roughness I'm going to push that up to around 65 66 that gives us the the look of medium format because when you're shooting on medium format the the actual grain because it was um, because it's on a bigger film type it actually becomes smaller and spreads out more so that's what we're trying to mimic there and you can see that that the way that these sliders are moving uh, that's that's mimicking that look as best as possible anyway um, so that looks pretty good let's just bring this color noise reduction down uh, let's take that away because we don't actually need that that looks pretty good so if we if we now look at the actual before and after so i'm going to press y on the keyboard you can see there we go that has given us this lovely film look and i'm, I'm such a big fan of it let me just come up to 100 percent here you can see that obviously the digital image is as sharp and as real to life as possible but what we're trying to mimic with this film is is just getting these lovely saturations of colors that you would get from this medium format film and it is just beautiful i really like it and it adds a lot of drama and a lot of mood to the images so i hope you've enjoyed that have a play yourself and just remember that just messing around with these colors here a couple of sliders here and there, a couple of changes of these hues and saturations will make a massive difference to your image. So, so just don't be afraid just to just to see where it works on your particular image. Okay, um, you might want to make it a little bit less saturated or more saturated. So have a play, see what you think. But I really like that. I think it's a it's a really really beautiful edit, and it really has that sinister kind of look to it. And uh, yeah, it's a great film, Cinestill 800T. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.